and Mama Janet, the First Lady, all mourners in your various capacities, the main celebrant, my brother, Bishop Professor Olwa, I would like to thank God for this day. I would like to thank God for bringing all of us here and preserving our lives. We can't take it for granted. Uh, dear mourners, Tuesday, 2nd of May, was the darkest part of my life. The morning began very well, a brighter morning, but little did I know the world was going to turn upside down. But I thank God. God had prepared me to face it. On the 20th of April, I got a voice. I always do my prayer first. I'm not guided, but whenever I find situations are tough, I put my knees down. And God spoke to me, enter into a prayer fast for 21 days. I asked the voice, what is my prayer point that I must be referring to and I must pray for? I had a voice, go and start prayer fast on 21st. This was on Thursday, then 21st was a Friday. Then I took on, obediently, and once I start my prayer fast, I always prepare my husband and my house helper. So that when they are providing daily meals, especially breakfast, lunch, they should not sit in the dining because I'll not join them. Much as I'll be seated with him at the dining, but I'll not partake in the meals which are provided until such a time my time for breaking the fast comes. So he was aware the last week of April he was very energetic. He toured this country on official assignments. I remember when I was at my workplace in eastern Uganda. He called me. When are you coming back from field? I'm based in Jinja, but I take on Busoga sub-region. I'm a teacher by profession. I work for Opportunity International, Education Finance, Education Quality Program. We rolled out digital education program in schools and we support teachers and school proprietors in capacity building. We are retooling teachers. So I was in the field conducting my cluster meetings. When he called me, I said, since the time is coming to an end, some clusters are concentrating in the closer of school. So my, some of my meetings will not be successful. And then he told me to come back home. I returned back to Kampala on Wednesday evening. Then he told me he is traveling to Moroto. He has got an appointment with a funder. General Salim Saleh. But you leave on Thursday, will sleep in Oya, then very early on Friday, by 11, that is his meeting time. Then I told him it's well. He left, he went to Moroto, very early on Friday morning, he had his meetings. Then that Friday evening, he came back and slept at home in Oyam. That is when, when he met the parent, especially the father of the two little girls whom we have ad adopted. He sought my consent to
to bring them for holidays in Kampala. I told him that is the best you would have done for them so that they have a change of environment and they will be focused so that they work, they work hard to see that while they have been buried in the village, there is a different world outside there. And that very night, he had a meeting and they agreed and wrote down a consent note, accept the parents handing over the two little girls to us to take care of their education. And then I told him, since the political figure, we need to meet the probation officer so that it will not be politicized that we have grabbed somebody's children. Excuse me, somebody's children. And when they came back Saturday in the evening and welcomed the little girls, then we prepared to go for a family social function in Tungabamu at the family of Professor Bashasha. Just like my brother-in-law, Honorable Sam Mengola, had clearly stated, for him, he traveled on Saturday evening. Since my husband was still in the village, we decided we'll leave very early Sunday morning because this was a consecration service of a new church which was built in honor of Mama Joy Bashasha. And that was her will she left that her children should complete this church in memory of her name. And passionately, indeed, the children fulfilled their will. Mourners, sometimes God can prepare people. During the powerful sermon delivered by his grace, the Archbishop of the Church of Uganda, who was the main celebrant, just like my brother-in-law, Honorable Sam, said, there were over... 19 clergy but the bishops were 19 but i think there were over 50 and during he, the delivery of this sermon my husband kept noting and he noted things i actually discovered after his death your excellency Permit me to read in his own handwriting how he gave us a ray of hope. He kept noting in the order service booklet, it reads Church Consecration Order of Service, St. Paul's Murambi, Church of Uganda Parish. And this is on page 15. For those who were in that service, he said, he wrote, you are called. Who has called you? Who are you to be called? Why were you called for? And then he wrote in capital letters, God called you. He underlined And then he made a phrase. Because you have prepared me, I have told you to tell the children and your grandchildren to do my will. He wrote again in capital letters, never lose hope. So there's a ray of hope. For me, I am celebrating his life. I have stayed with him for the last 23 years. He came into my life and asked me to take care of the children. 
because the nature of his work does not allow him to be always at home. Just like my children have stated, sometimes there's still something. Sometimes in his free time when he's at home, he will have those good times with him. He takes them out. When it is time for taking them to school, when he's around, he will take them. He will join me. We do shopping, we take them to school. And I've done that passionately. I have seen the children grown. We have seen the children married. We have seen the children working. Though others are still not working, just like you have seen the two little we have adopted two days before his demise. But I have hope because the message he has left in this book strengthens me. That is why I am here before you. Then he went ahead, wrote in his own handwriting, which I always challenge because I tell him, you write like, you know, chicken are playing on sand, but it is readable. Then he said, why is God leaving you to stay up to date? That was another question. And then the question was answered in this way. He also wrote, because he wants me to accept him to do what he wants me to do for him. That marks the end of the answer. So, he was called to serve in different capacities. I think he has made his contribution in this country. And um, I am well convinced he has gone to the Father, very satisfied with life. He has not been complaining. Your Excellency, I would like to thank you for giving my husband to work in different areas whether in politics, a special army. The whole of him was army. Even if he was a politician, when anything to do with army is running in the TV, he will attend passionately. Sometimes he, even begin, he begins giving orders when he's seated in his sitting room. You should have done this. This commander should have done this. You feel the passion of the army in him. I would like to thank God that even during tough times, he never gave up. I will always see it in him when he's low, he doesn't speak because he's always energetic. Even when talking, you see the energy in him. Then I will play for him a song, which is in... Order of service, page 17, God on the mountain. I would like the sound manager, at least we sing only the first verse and the chorus. That was his strength. And good enough, he has noted here, never lose hope. So we have not lost it all. We still have hope. Sound manager, just an interlude. It's on page 15. Yeah, page 15, right. No, Thank no, you sir. for that correction.
in the bar side, the God of the day, is still God in the night. Thank you, thank you, my sister. He gave us hope that the same God who is on the mountain, when we're in the day, when we're in the sun, is the same God when we're in the valley, when we're in darkness, and when we're in the night. Don't lose hope. Your Excellency and the fellow mourners, don't lose hope. Uganda is a country that you'll never find in any part of this I would say the continent, yes, Africa. Actually, the, the, whole of, the whole world. This country is a beautiful country with all the natural weather, the rains, the signs. We should not lose hope. I know the secret service is at it, but we have the secret listener. The secret seer, he saw it all, and he heard everything, and will help your excellency to reach the conclusion of this. He died in a cold blood, but I know it is a sacrificial blood. And he has stated it, don't lose hope. Your Excellency, he also wrote in the same page, when Professor Bashasha was launching his book, that looking at development through the third eye, which was launched on that same day, we read this book in 10 minutes on Sunday night, because Monday he had to be in Namutumba. And one of the things which caught his eyes in this book was why children from elite families are losing identity. And then PDM could deliver fundamental change. Actually, he kept on doing things while we're traveling because his meeting with a funder general Salim Salim was about i think fish farming and then he kept on calling the this oyam district fisheries officer to compile for him the list he also went as far as engaging the labor officers in all the districts so that they can identify fish farmers and then during the launch, he also, just like my son said, stated, he had developed a radio program called Nena Bo. And in the things that I have to accomplish, he wanted to write a book. The first book is on basic health care. And then the second book is about is on Nena Bo, meaning you should see far. And then the third assignment which he wrote here is Daddy's Dream, which was the church which has been complete, uh, which is at completion, which most of the mourners talked about what he used to share with, with them. And then he noted, remember. So he was actually reminding me to remember these things when he's gone. Your Excellency, I pledge to fulfill this legacy. Uh, coming to his, uh, sorry, his political life way back in the district. He served as a district chair for two terms, those are 10 years. But there's one funny thing which he instituted, which all the mourners have not talked about. He instituted a meeting for open 
criticism. And that meeting was held quarterly, whereby all the heads of departments, the district cow, all the district councillors will, will sit in one room and you criticize your, your friend, the wrong things he has done to you or she has done to you before him. And she will be the starting point. Then after that, he chairs the meeting. That was unique because there's always witch hunting at work. There's always bickering at work. A lot of things happen within the workmates. But this was a strategy he instituted to solve those issues which divert performance. An Oyam district local government received certificate for good financial management for two financial years during his leadership. So he had to use different leadership styles to steward the district. I thank God for that contribution he made. Your Excellency, I would like to thank the Minister of Health in a special way. Honorable Jane, Ruth Chen Ochero, you are a great sister and you are a brave one. She was fearless and she faced me. She allowed me to cry. I asked questions. I cast God. I cast the day when I was born, just like Job did. But I would like to ask before you forgiveness from God that what I uttered was uncalled for. It is my first time to go into, in Ilango it is called Chola. 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 He trained me to be strong. But, friends, Tuesday, I couldn't stand after seeing my husband in a pool of blood with his ADC. I didn't know where I was taken. The whole world changed. I, my pressure went low. It came up. I had diarrhea, I had fever, I had every sort of, you know. But the doctors did their best to bring me on feet. But above all, God was in charge. When my sister here, she's my sister, she's a honorable member of parliament, they were at my home looking for where Joyce is until they had to call a lady, picked my phone. Dr. Jane found herself in the facility where I was. She gave me time to cry. As a medical professional, she knows crying is a relief. But afterwards, I asked her questions, and I told her, you are not a liar like your brother. Tell me where he is, I go and see him. He told me, Joyce, look straight to my face. My brother is no more. Those were her words. And you have to pick your pieces and be firm. We are going to, everything is going to be on you. She said, you're a woman of faith. God will never abandon you. We prayed and then we left the facility. Doctor, I will not fail you.
I made a promise that I'll be strong, and that is why I am strong now. And then, my children talked about his unique characters, things which he hated, about witchcraft, theft, lies. He was a straightforward person. He doesn't want, he calls a spade a spade. He doesn't meander around or to beat around the bush so that he brings the point. He will face you and tell you the truth. And that was him. As I draw closer to concluding my remarks, Your Excellency, permit me to express my sincere appreciation for according my husband an official burial. It has given me strength and it has given me hope. As he has stated here, do not lose hope. Your Excellency, the cabinet, his colleagues, they abandoned. I don't think on Tuesday the cabinet went no more. All the ministers came in to support us emotionally. Everybody failed to comprehend what it was, but they had to accept the bitter truth. The parliament of the Republic of Uganda under her stewardship, the Right Honorable Speaker of Parliament and her deputy, they were physically in my house the first day. The deputy speaker came in the morning because he had an assignment in the afternoon. Then the Honorable Speaker came in the evening. I cannot take it for granted. With all the members of parliament from the whole of Uganda, it is because of you that we are strong. You have given us courage. You have given us hope. The Minister of Defense and the Minister of Gender, where he served. Most especially, the UPDF family. He made me to know all the generals, all the senior officers all, of all parts of this country. We have moved into their homes, we have shared good moments. The latest has been when we are celebrating the birthday of General Otema. A number of them were there. I think that was his last, you know, social function out of the church. And then the police, they are at it. They came immediately. In fact, when the driver was told to run by Sabit before he took his life, he ran to the police. The nearest police post was the first to arrive at the scene of crime. Then the whole police family. And up to now, they are still with us. And... I'm pleading that you continue to be with us. My family, my husband's nuclear family, my sister Betty here, she was the first. And the entire Lango community in Kampala Metropolitan converged. The chairman, as I speak, is here. He has been with us on the first day, Tuesday, 
up to today and I know tomorrow we are also going to Lango with him. May I take this honor, Your Excellency, to identify him, to rise up for recognition because he's standing on behalf of the Lango community who are here and again in the village. Mr. Pule, right there on the West Nile, the Acholi, all regions of this country, because I'm a born of West Nile, that is Arua, my first family, and all the politicians, because my husband used to go for functions in Arua. They are all here, and they will be joining us also in Oyam. I thank all of you for coming in big numbers. Ladies and gentlemen, Nakasongola Army Secondary School was my first school where I started teaching. I did not know that I made an impact. It is actually through such moments that that's when you will know that you have friends out there. My oldest students whom I taught, who are now in working class, they have come in physically, they have poured their condolences and others are coming to send off my dear husband. I never thought that they would be there, but they have remembered me. May God continue to bless you where you are. And then, yeah, I work in Jinja, Busoga subregion. Most of them did not know that I'm a wife of a minister because of the level of the level of humbleness I portray. All of them have poured and my teens at work, they have been coming in the house. I know you are not here, but we do not take for granted the empathies and sympathies you have given to us during this trying moment. Mourners from different categories, from UK, US, all over the world, have said their prayers. They have condoned with us and they are still condoning with us. And then lastly, the church, All Saints Cathedral. They have been there from day one up to now and they will even continue to join us in Oyam. And then our cultural leader, Muse Yosam Odur Murunyachi of Lango Cultural Foundation, loved his son so dearly, and he promised he will never leave him. Papa, I've received your condolence through your representative who is here. Yes. Thank you so, so much. Your Excellency, allow me to thank all mourners and pray that God that has brought you here in one piece should preserve your life and take you back in one piece. And those who will make to Lango for the burial, for the final send-off, may the good Lord grant you journey mercies. I say all this for God and my country. <laughs>